Joining us now, Guggenheim Securities IT hardware and mobility analyst Robert Sierra, who has the latest on Apple. And with us here at Post 9, Evercore technology and internet analyst Anthony DiClemente, who wraps up the rest of the FANG names for us. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, thanks for, having for, uh, us. Thanks for having me. Robert, I want to start with you um, because among your coverage universe, you have names like Apple, IBM, Tesla that you follow, names that are exposed to China, have operations in China. Given the fact that we are seeing an even bigger, broader tariff list here from the U.S. and now increased, increased fears of retaliation, including quote unquote qualitative uh, retaliation from uh, China, how does this play out for these stocks? Well, it's obviously worth watching, but I think there, I mean, there's a sense of, of optimism that things will work out in the end. And, and I know that sounds uh, a little Pollyannish, but I mean, I think that the tech supply chain, I mean, if you look at something like Apple, uh, the tech supply chain is so um, sort of mixed between uh, the U.S. and China. I, I don't really think you can, you can break it apart. Uh, and so I think there's a, a, a sense that the sort of the, the tech supply chain is bigger than tariffs. Anthony, as we mentioned, you cover some of the other FANG names. Uh, six stocks, all tech stocks, that are counting for 98% of the S&P's year-to-date returns, including Amazon, Netflix, Alphabet, Facebook. Yeah. Are these overcrowded trades at this point? Well, I think as it pertains to the, the question that you asked, uh, you asked Robert, I think you know, the trade war, this, these have been a safe haven from any trade-related concerns. Like, most of them don't have big operations in China. And so, you know, what I would say is that it is possible that because of protectionism that Trump and the U.S. will limit Chinese investment into Silicon Valley, into the Bay Area. But I really don't think that trade fears are a reason not to own the FANG stocks. I think the, the real, uh, the kind of the bear case on FANG is that a couple of them are pretty expensive, be it Amazon or Netflix, but they're so well loved by the consumer base that, you know, I, I, would, I would be bullish on the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon. Uh, Facebook and Google are pretty inexpensive, still pretty cheap on, on a traditional earnings multiple. But so, you know, these stocks have outperformed industrials. They're, they're not really, I mean, when I talk to investors, they're not worried about, um, maybe with the exception of e-commerce and perhaps an eBay, uh, they're not really worried about U.S. versus China and the trade war as they think about the fundamentals of the FANG stocks. Rob, 10 years after the launch of Apple's App Store, what's the right way to think about Apple's services business? Is it a counterweight to concerns about the lengthening replacement cycle in iPhones, or is it kind of a, a lagging indicator of the iPhone ecosystem overall? Which I mean, it, yeah. So, I mean, I think services is becoming a bigger part of the narrative for good reason. I mean, it really is important. I think for two reasons. One is if you look at the just the overall smartphone market, I mean growth has slowed. I mean it's it's, it's kind of you know slowed down to kind of no growth, uh, but services, recurring services, are actually growing. Uh, and so if you you know if, I think the model now for Apple is to kind of keep iPhone units flat to up if they can. I mean they, they still want to keep people uh, replacing iPhones, try and keep that replacement cycle shorter than three years. They're raising prices to help uh, revenue growth, but then the, the model really is to drive services. And services are 15% of Apple's revenue, but they're 25% of their profits. And services right now are growing 20 plus percent. Um, so I think that services growth is what allows Apple to keep growing, uh, even if the smartphone market is kind of flattish. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.